expander exposed. Welcome to Australia, more specifically, Victoria. And even more specifically, the sprawling outer western suburb of Melbourne named Truganina. And to get even more specific, the crumbling, hulking, graffiti covered remains of the Truganina Munitions Reserve located on Palmer's Road. Located near the border of the Wathaurong, Woonarong, and the Boonarong Aboriginal People's Lands, the somewhat barren lava plains of what would one day be named Truganina was once home to thousands of Indigenous Australians who lived a sustainable nomadic lifestyle for around 40,000 years. In 1835, John Batman founded what would soon become known as Melbourne. And it was not long until what we now know as Truganina was snapped up by European settlers for farmland. The Robinson family owned the land bounded by Doherty's, Boundary and Palmer's Roads for many years, even erecting a homestead on the property. In January 1938, with the Second World War starting to look imminent, it became known the government intended to acquire Henry Robinson's 194 hectare property for use as a munitions depot. A part of the government's plan to improve the position with regard to armaments in Australia. With the Commonwealth now at war, the isolated farming land was soon rapidly turned into a state-of-the-art munitions storage site. Opening in 1940, the Truganina Munitions Reserve or Derriman Explosive Reserve, as it was sometimes called, was now sitting pretty amongst its fellow bases in Melbourne's heavily militarised west. The entire base was designed meticulously to reduce the risk of ignition of the explosives and ordinances stored in the numerous magazines and sheds. There were lightning rods everywhere. There was no electricity in the munitions magazines. There was firefighting equipment on hand everywhere, which was especially required due to the risk of grass fires. A fully self-contained two-foot gauge battery electric locomotive hauled tramway was used to transport explosives around the site instead of normal trucks in an attempt to reduce ignition sources. The tramway system was fraught with issues due to the poorly designed flat cargo trucks. The first set of trucks to be used on the site were built by SW Newman of Port Melbourne and were prone to derailing on corners. The replacement trucks were built by the Victorian Railways in the Newport workshops but were not much of an improvement. The prototype truck was prone to derail on straight. The narrow gauge tramway was used for 18 years but was eventually replaced by regular rubber tyred road vehicles in 1958. The site stored many forms of explosives including ammonium nitrate. Some recounts claim that radioactive waste was also stored at the site for many years. The Truganina Munitions Reserve was a very important and busy place during its operation. In 1986, with the risk of global conflict now seeming low and the urban sprawl of Melbourne creeping ever closer, the site ceased being used for munitions storage. The base was later decommissioned and the land was sold to property developers wanting to build an industrial estate. Although significant, unfortunately there are currently no heritage overlays affecting the property. However, it is listed on the Victorian Heritage Inventory, meaning the developer would need to go through Heritage Victoria before carrying out any work on the site, but that hasn't saved any buildings so far. The historic wartime buildings which offer a window into the past have been demolished one by one as required to make way for the new warehouses. Developers and council members, both blindsided by greed, have once again destroyed our irreplaceable Australian history. Seemingly no action has been taken to save anything from the base. Old enough to be notable, but not old enough to deem saving. What a deplorable waste. As of the time of releasing this video, now almost nothing remains of the Truganina Munitions Reserve which once played a vital role in defending Australia and its allies in World War II and was a gleaming benchmark in safe 1940s munitions handling and storage technology. As the last remaining bricks crumble and slip closer to a faded memory than a tangible touch, it reminds us all to remember the stories of the ones who served and sacrificed for us, lest we forget.
funky A-Ban Savoys. Go everyone, Matt from Panda Explorers here. Today we are out in this abandoned location that used to be a military armory? I think it was an armory. Uh, it was a uh, munitions reserve. Well, who's that speaking? Uh, that's that's Les. Hey. Wait, have I hijacked your channel? <laughs> Welcome to Panda Explorers, Fogarty Avenue, the collab that none of you asked for. Here is a sign talking about the redevelopment. All those buildings over there are going to form this part of the subdivision. Here's a little map showing the stuff they're going to build. There's a hut there, 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 and there. The main admin block, there's nothing planned for that as of this map. There's something else there, something else there, something else. But, um, yeah. Okay, everyone, Matt from Panda Explorers here. Now, we're out in the bush today. You're probably wondering, Matt, why you dragged us out in the middle of the bush. Random footpath in the middle of an abandoned location. Oh, it's getting your way. All right, so we're here at the abandoned munitions reserve. Demolition on these little munitions huts has already begun, so let's check them out. Pretentious arty farty shot. Oh, snails. 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 Well, I was probably wondering, Matt, why you drag us out into the middle of the bush? That's what I was wondering dairy okay so this little hut here i'm pretty sure used to store ammunition like bullets and stuff like that as you can see demolition has begun unfortunately this is a massive truck oh yuck there's asbestos sheeting all over the floor oh my yeah, asbestos cleanup team. What are you doing? Here's all their used asbestos suits. And ooh, some snackies. Walking over all oh, this asbestos. Okay, really should not be in here. I actually came here a few months ago and documented these buildings before the asbestos abation began. So I'll chuck in some shots of this building before the asbestos was completely removed because it was much more intact and beautiful back then. Look at the wooden framing, very old building, you can see the heat ducts still remain. Floyd standing next to your boy John Howard. All right, coming in this door, getting a bit of a view. <laughs> Mad pieces. Dairy. If you look closely, yeah, there's a little white line. Um, these little huts are very well ventilated. There's a vent there, openable windows too. That's because they needed to keep the munitions nice and cool, otherwise they might blow up. <laughs> Ceiling vents up there on one of these vents, you can see. There's this little pulley wheel because there used to be like a little flappy piece that they could open and close. And there used to be a little line that led here to hooks where they would tie off the rope. And then if they wanted to open it, they would tie up the rope and pull the pulley to vent the hot air. But um, yeah, pretty destroyed. Here are some pictures from my previous visit. A lot of asbestos containing cement sheet products were used on the building because of its non-flammable properties. By the way, this building has since been demolished and a new humongous warehouse sits on its place. As you can see, the machinery is all here, but there's no one here today, so we thought the risk was worth it. You can see for the door, for this building here, it has a little drain because they didn't want any water getting in because if the munitions got wet, they would get ruined. It's kind of cool. A place that was once so like neat and tidy and preserved is now this destroyed. It's hard to see there, but look at the lovely brickwork on that drain down there. These old metal blast doors contain a beehive and then shop underneath it is the destroyed remains of a beehive, but but the bees still live on. I'll pop in a shot of these blast doors from before they were vexed. <laughs> if you look closer in this window, you can see where those metal blast doors would have also been mounted on these windows. And they would have been held open with these little hooks. What a wonderful old building going completely to waste. I'm lucky. You can see the asbestos eaves have been removed there, but here, they still remain, so they give you sort of an idea of what the building used to look like back in the day. Those little slats there are all ventilation things to vent hot air from the roof. Beyond the now rusty destroyed perimeter fence is a lovely velocity. That uh, shot completely failed. Well, maybe, no. Nope. We dressed in the tradie gear today, so we look like we fit in. And uh, I think it's working, isn't that right, Panda Explorers? I believe so. Dairy. This hut is next for the asbestos getting destroyed. Um, but it's pretty intact, so that's pretty cool. Let's have a look. Whoa! First hut. 
second hut. So this one is a more intact version of the one we just checked out. Lovely machinery there. The little cherry picker workstation is just filled with broken cement sheet which contains asbestos. They're not taking safety seriously at all. A lovely piece of asbestos sheeting roof. Building C7. Crispy fire extinguisher nook. Love the look of the sun through the old ventilation vent things. This place would have had the blast doors as well. By looking at the gutters, you can see the building would have been green at one stage. Lovely drain. Look at the ornateness on that drain pipe holder. Crispy on the exterior. All right, jumping in past the lovely bush into the gurned interior. Yeah, getting a four corner shot of this munitions building. Don't know how long this place has been abandoned, but I hope you're enjoying the video. Adelaide boy. Uh, I'm actually in Murrindindi, which is sort of between um, Glenburn and a uh, little attic door. You can see the floor is sort of like made of wood. It's sort of got this rubberized paint on it. The reason the floor was made from wood and had a rubberized finish was to make it non-electrically conductive in an attempt to eliminate ignition sources. The walls are like lippy. There's little remnants of like a secondary door you would have come in when you came in the main door. There's a the secondary door and you can see this line here. People are allowed to go here, the munitions are there. No one is allowed to cross that line. I'm pretty sure that's how it works though. You can see, shoot, been around. The line goes to this corner. There's a little bit of a gap just so they can like put the munitions in there. But um, yeah, do not cross the line. All right, coming out. There's um a little loading dock at the front of the buildings where trucks would have came and put the munitions in there and taken them out. Last time I was here, this was actually like loading dock height, but they put the dirt here so they can remove the asbestos. So I'll pop in a shot of what it used to look like. Big old baby. That piece is actually appropriate to the place because it has an explosives on it. Dairy. Dairy. Next to this hut here, I'm pretty sure there used to be a fire hydrant. I'll pop in a shot of um, the fire hydrant that used to be here. I love that little drain pipe thing in Bill, but anyway, cool building. Let's go to the next one. Well, some type of remnant sign here. Oh, it's a soccer club sign. Ooh, remnants here. Let's go. Out here, there's these little steak thingies because they're turning this all into an industrial park. Last time I was here, they didn't have these, so they're definitely ramping up the demolition now. Some type of big junk area. Now, this shed here is completely made out of asbestos sheeting so it's a pretty awesome shed but um it's definitely not going to survive unfortunately this building has been demolished as you can see dirt has been freshly placed here last time i was here this whole area of building was surrounded by a massive moat but um now it is dry as a bone entire remnants here possibly the remnant bridge that used to lead to this hut when it was flooded whoa dairy okay rather interesting it says burner what the heck I can actually see inside this thing. Let me put my light on. Dairy. Made of solid hardy flex. Lovely asbestos fibers. Azzy. I love the little. <laughs> like the other hut, they put dirt here. And yeah, this was all a massive moat last time. There would have been a loading dock, but like the other hut, they've put dirt so it's kind of unseeable now. The loading dock is now at ground level. This loading dock and all the magazine's loading docks are actually more of a goods platform because it was originally used with a tram. Each munitions magazine had its own little siding that ran next to it for use with the goods platform. In later years the trams were replaced with regular rubber tired road vehicles. Just documenting that little flange there. Dairy. This vent is still here. Does it work? Oh, it makes a good sound. I wonder what this used to hold. This probably used to hold a broom. It was essential to keep the magazine spotless to reduce contamination risks to the explosives and to remove anything on the floor that could cause a spark. Building number... <laughs> Building B7. Coming in. Big sort of open space. 
pretty awesome and pretty old. Pan from the corner of the room. This building used to get flooded. As you can see, the flood water would spill out through these busted holes in the wall and flow out onto the floor of the shed. And when it dries, it becomes these little crusty pieces. Just like the other building, this place has the little safety lines. Floyd's walking the line between good and evil. Lovely old windows here. Shot of the window demonstrating how they can be opened. It's such a pain that these windows will be destroyed one day. That was such a painful pun. But these guys are cracking up. Another pan of this wooden structure. So awesome. I love the metal that holds the structure together. So old and wonderful. Lovely, ominous, fibrous materials roof. And walls. The wooden structure of this room is awesome. Sort of just like a tilt. Pan, oid, thingamabob of this room. Little air vents. Air vents. Air vents. Okay, on this air vent here you can see there's the number 67. View of the outside world. You can see that the cement sheet has broken uh, along the uh, along the wall and that is because over the years with big winds the struts have been wobbling around the wall and the brittle asbestos sheet has just broken off there's like zero remnants of doors anywhere here anyway pretty much done we're coming out it's cool that the demolition people at least built some cool new roads out here because last time you just had to bush bash all the grass. Sounds good and I know yeah uh, most people have been asking about the remote control. Um, we've been using like a pretty stock standard remote for now just to test these boards on but I think you've got something kind of looking like dairy. I love this building, it's so cool, it's so small. You can see vehicles have just been driving around this thing. Massive pile of asbestos containing pipes. Let's just pretend we can't see all the asbestos fibers poking out of there and just put them in the normal rubbish. Defunct chair remnant. Matt from Panda Explorers just said, hey, why are the eaves on the building so big? That is because they didn't want any water getting in this building at all because if the bullets get wet, they are then useless. That's why there's a little emergency drain in front of the door. Drainage remnant? There's a drain down there. You can see there's like even more drainage here. It's kind of been covered up in this building, but there's like more drainage stuff. Lots of drainage. You can kind of see where floodwaters would have risen up on the side of this building. Little air vents there. Melbourne based epic guy. Let's keep tilting. La 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 la. Dairy. The asbestos sheeting is still alive and well. Up there, some random numbers. Well, I can read April 57 is the bottom bit. There would have been steel blast door thingies on these windows too. Right. Panda explores, slip slop slapping. Loading dock remnant. There would have been a little banistrat thing there. There's like a remnant of a sign. No saying what it was though. Building A7. Boys getting up good. I love these little support struts. Anyway, coming in. Coming in. Attempted tilt, sort of pan-esque of this room. Now coming across, a little bit of a pan action. Pretty small room, but uh, pretty awesome. This would make a really great tiny home. Little lippy floor. And you can see the floor is also wood that's got like sort of a rubberized finish. You can see all the planks underneath there. And um, the line is uh, also visible here too. Little secondary door remnants. Burger Dynamics. Smashed window on the ceiling. There is a remnant piece from back in the day. This is the only building that I know of so far that actually has the remnant rope left for the pulley system thing in Bob. So there would have been like a little opening mouth flappy piece there. Part of the hinge still remains. The rope would have come down, there's a little pulley there, and it would come down, and there's a little hook here that used to tie off the rope. For these three vents, the pulleys would have come through these little pulleys here, and then shoop, tied off in the three hooks. Just sort of like an empty room. Pretty cool though. Anyway, coming out, because we're done. Hey Floyd, hey Panda. Hey okay, everyone, Matt from Panda Explores here. So we've just finished that last building here, and um, a great view is over there of the buildings we've just completed. They've even got a sauna. Oh, it smells like a sauna too. Gear's gone though. 
That looks like it's long gone. Yeah, Les, you'd really like this, mate. Bex is everywhere, mate. mate. <laughs> I didn't f***ing Bex that, but check out the size of the rock that Frank was f***ing in there. <laughs> is it like a real commitment? Far out, this is just so much. So much personal details in here, that's crazy. The weird thing is, look how many different names there are. Dairy. Was the hospital thing anywhere near the train line? Goes from that town into. Like it must be on the other oh, no, over there, abandoned stuff, right here, new sort of waterway redevelopment sort of area. Got a bike path, got everything. Little access track over there. But yeah, they're just turning this into like a little wetlands area. It's really weird. There's a path here, but the path actually isn't connected to anything yet. This is all going to make sense once the industrial estate is built, but at the moment, it looks pretty out of place. Walking through very long grass on a hot Australian summer day. Watch out for slippery surfers. Some lovely pumice rocks here because we are on a lava plain sort of thing. This whole part of Melbourne is a lava plain. Oh, Panda Garage, Panda Garage, what is this? That is a Falcon V, uh, straight six. Wow, you actually know that. Yeah. That's so cool. They built these for 57 years in July. Just a petrol one. The youngest that engine could be is like 2003. Illegally dumped rubbish. Alright, so we're finished with this part of the complex. We're gonna go jump in Marilyn and move on to the next part. So here is the pan of the buildings here. And um, so we're done with these. And look over here, over here is another building terrible shot. Scotty's got the flu anyway. Oh! Bestie nappies! Our chariot awaits. Matt from Panda Garage here today. Quick little video, more of an update, but there's not really much to update, so there actually is no video uh, today. <coughs> oh, getting getting sick. But as you can see, the Jeep's in the exact same position as it was um, a few weeks ago when we were talking about it in the sort of mixed vlog video. Uh, little Deminence pad here of where a building once was. Probably just another munitions hut, I'm guessing. This was likely the remains of one of the ammonium nitrate stores, or the foundations of one that was never built. By looking at the map, there are a total of 48 ammonium nitrate stores slash building foundations that ran along the Doherty's Road and Palmer's Road corner of the base. The walls would have been made out of corrugated iron. Vibe. The boys are now passing another little demonence pad. This whole area is just mowed. It looks like a park. The only thing that makes it not look like a park are the abandoned buildings dotted everywhere. Mm -hmm. Just like a whole stack of temporary fencing here. Random poles. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Alright, anyway, let's continue to explore. Way. Okay. Very busy road there. <laughs> Munitions hut, I would say. This was an ammonium nitrate store. Ammonium nitrate is a chemical compound often used as a fertilizer, but it is also used in the production of explosives. Ammonium nitrate on its own is not inherently explosive, hence why the quality of the store building is low and not much thought has been put into reduce ignition risks. Ammonium nitrate is only extremely explosive when mixed with other ingredients. This was an ammonium nitrate store. Little bird's nest. 
Sally's liquid nails. Just a whole bunch of random paints and stuff. My head is a jungle, jungle. My Floyd is a jungle, jungle. Isn't that right? That's right. There's actually a little remnant road that runs in front of these buildings. It's the first road we've actually seen on this site. Some type of little remnant here. Do you have any clue what that color coding is? I love the rust on there. What'd you find, Floyd? A defunct star picket. That is crazy. Very, very crispy building. Crispy. Now we're out in the bush today. There's some intentionally planted trees here. I have no clue what for though, but it's pretty cool. Defunct CRT. TV here. YouTube killed the TV star. I love listening to car seat headrest. A destroyed Telstra little telecommunications pit thing there. All right, let's go and have a look in this forest here. Tea trees. Yeah, I have no clue. Just a little tree area. Yeah, pretty weird. A large pile of dumped wood. Lovely Aussie eucalyptus plants here. So yeah, you can see all the trees. If anyone knows why these were planted, give us a hoy. <gasps> wow, look at that shed. <laughs> this just looks like a shed you would find in the country, like in someone's paddock. This just looks like a shed you would find in the country, like in someone's paddock. This just looks like a shed you would find in the country, like in someone's paddock. This was an ammonium nitrate store. The Panda Explorers team is entering. You can see the roof is no longer existent here. In Skelly. In Skelly. This place is so flimsy. Crispy chicken wire remnants of the ventilation. Crispy, crispy, crispy. Remnants of the top of the roof here. It's like a coat hanger thing. No clue what for. Nice little throw up there. See that getting up good. We got FM up on the wall there. Baxter tube. <gasps> Pink dot. Trip is blocked. Not blocked. Mod graphic. I'ma just get a shot first though. Sprouter. <gasps> Bunny! Yummy, yummy. Oh, it's like some moss there. Wow, fire extinguisher remnant here. Pretty crispy now. Dairy. Like the other shed, there was a sliding door at one point. And we're thinking because of the fire extinguisher there, those markings on the other building could have been for a fire extinguisher too. I'll pop in a Google map shot along Palmer's Road here was a whole line of these sort of corrugated iron buildings. The two over there we just saw have been demolished. These two still remain and yeah there would have been buildings all along here at one stage a demolition remnant of one of those metal sheds the front of the shed just fell over and the whole thing must have just collapsed on top of itself so yeah there would have been buildings all along here at one stage another demonence pad pro security another Demolished little pad here, not much remains. Sprouters, concrete remnants. Ah, uh, Panda, can I get you to say bridge remnant at the top of your lungs? No. Doesn't. <laughs> oh. Now I'm on top of a shed remnant. Yep, just more concrete. The floor of this shed is like really lumpy, I don't know why. A remnant old power pole still lives on. Any remnants? That's been removed. It's been slightly burnt. Sometimes you can find little sort of tags on there and they'll say what the place used to be called. Like it could have said Trugging Indian Munitions Reserve, but it's not there, obviously. Now approaching another sort of demonence pad shed. Just concrete, there's another power yeah, pole here. Now these Moylan insulators. A shed would have once been here too. Little pump house thing here. This pole's got remnants. ECV 1985. ECV 1988. It's got like a little light. Just like some junk here for this little sort of crane area that's next door. Massive water tank here. It seems to be just completely empty.
Oh yeah, that you can't get in. Whoa, this looks sick. All right, coming in. All right, attempted tilt, sort of panoid of this little pumping house. There you go, that's the room. So you're just like massive pipes and stuff like that. Okay, this is a humongous pump. You can see there is the electric motor and there is the propeller. I hope I'm getting to the correct terminology. Floyd thinks that is a propeller, but it could be an impeller. West Footscray Engineering, Melbourne Metropolitan Board of Works. Little badge there from Braybrook, Victoria. On this electric engine, there's a serial number. More little oh, yeah. jingleberries here. This is the little specs plate, and it says that it is 45 horsepower, this motor. This equipment is the property of Commonwealth of Australia, Department of Supply. Plant number 2409. Is it? Oh, we don't know the amps. Fire extinguisher nook. That would have been the mains there, Floyd. Maybe, but what does it say here? Automatic fire sprinklers, limited. Crispy. Dairy. Crispy. Dairy. Wow, this is cool. Power. No clue what that was for. Some lovely remnants down there. As you can see, it still drips. A little bit of a fuse board remnant. Power. Just like random stuff. Just like a switch thing. <laughs> Dairy. An old meter there. State Electricity Commission of Victoria. And it says light. Switchboard thing here. Bell control and isolator switch. Maybe that's for the fire alarm system. Little switchboard. Sorry for the lighting. I'm going to get another shot in just a second. Ominous fibrous materials. Just gizmos, really. That is an awesome, crispy patina. Patina on the side of this box. The walls would have been painted green at one stage. Very awesome vintage light switch. Vintage military hipster light bulb. Some remnant old timey writing. I think it says McLeod RFM 250 425. There's an army base up in McLeod. All right, little shed. Another tin shed, Deminent. Currently standing where a road once was. Yet more concrete remnants. Probably just another tin shed. Little line here. It had like a little footpathy piece. I love how like warped the ground is. Brought to you by Coles. Not really. These lovely trees are a little bit of a remnant. This whole area used to just be surrounded by farms and one of the reasons this place had to be abandoned is because of its close proximity to Melbourne. They can't just have explosives rocking out right next to brand new industrial estates. So it had to be closed. Plus I guess they just didn't need it anymore. Doing some sprays. Yeah, this, this is just a quick little video. I just wanted to sort of touch base with you guys, let you know what's going on. Uh, I'm going to have a new review video out next week. I was hoping to have it out this week, but I just didn't uh, have the time to edit it and I want to get it right because it's a review video and um, yeah it's not much else we're just doing a bit of cleaning here at the moment we've got a million batteries to get rid of uh, but hopefully have some new projects soon for security a little deminence pad here you can see on the side of this concrete pad these little corrugation things so this probably was just another one of those old corrugated tin sheds yep just a concrete remnant there's a deminent there there's also a Deminent here, I'm pretty sure, but it's so overgrown. There's that Deminent. Here's another Deminent remnant. Sprouters! Yeah, not much left of this building. I don't know, just concrete really, can't really say. Okay, on to the next Deminent. Those guys are going over there to check out the main attraction. I'm just documenting these Demin Deminents. Another little Deminent there. Once again, hard to tell what it was. Probably just another little shed. Now approaching another Deminence. Yeah, just sort of chunks left here. Demolition remnants, which is what Deminence means. It's sort of hard to tell, but there's a humongous mound around this whole building. Panda puts it into perspective. Look at that huge mound. Such a cool building. Must be one of the few left that actually has a bomb. Cute. Judging by the map, it looks like this was the only munitions magazine at the base that had an embankment around it. Which signifies to me that whatever used to be stored in this magazine was extremely explosive and posed a serious threat 
to the rest of the base if ignited. How fascinating. Oh, I should probably tell you, this building has been demolished and there's absolutely no sign of it and no one will ever know because no one cares. Pretty awesome mound. Attempted pan of this building. Piece of metal here, looks like a bonnet of a car. Some random pipes here probably for the new development. Whoa, this is old. Whoa, this might even predate the munitions reserve. An old stock feeding trough. This land originally was all farmland and then for World War II they're like, we need a munitions depot and they're like, excuse me farmer, we're taking your land and turning it into munitions depot. So that trough is probably from the original farmer. That is seriously a piece of history. Can't believe this is still here. The mound doesn't wrap around the whole building. That was done intentionally to allow access for the tram to use the magazine. There's a little beaten path to the A-band. Wow, this is sick. I love this little pole that's just holding up the eave. Possible fire hydrant remnant. Vent, vent, vent. Does this still work? No. Vent. The asbestos eaves have been removed, so it's just down to the wooden frame at this point. Tilt on the front of this building. Such an awesome thing. And look, you can see the loading dock is sort of still visible, which is great. Check out this drain. The amount of detail that went into this building is so awesome. If you look closely, you can tell there wouldn't have been a little sort of banister art there. A3. A3. No clue what would have been mounted there. Fire extinguisher. Marindindi. Whole bunch of sticks. The old heat vent things are just dumped over there. Would have been vents and stuff here, but it's all been backfilled over the years. You can see that like the little veg thing would have been made out of chicken wire. Then out of those little slats over it. Marindindi. Marindindi. Lovely ornate drain holders. Looks like it was someone's office at some point. The building was last painted white, but you can tell over the years it was once that bluey colour and also sort of a dark green too. Dairy. Into room number one. This room has many corners, four corners, and on all the walls there are pieces. Gear's gone though. That looks like it's long gone. Lovely safety glass. You can see where the little roof flappy vents would have once been. You can see the little cornicing things still remain. Cornicing, cor 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 cornicing. Don't cross the line. They certainly did. That is just not appropriate. Dairy. All right, coming out. Hey. Creepy couches. All right, into room number two. For this room, I'm just gonna get a little bit of a pan. Sort of give you some context of the space. Come in and if you look closely behind Floyd you can just make out the safety line and then over here you can see the safety lines there and if you come over here safety line goes here and then comes up along the wall just like in the other buildings. Little roof remnants here. The amount of woodwork that went into making this roof is so excessive but I think it's so cool. Looks like that person's got a runny nose. I hate it so much, I can't even finish a f***ing piece! Tilt. Tilt of this room. Marindindi? 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 Over here is a whole pile of like rock. I think there might be some demnants, but I don't really know. Wondering, Matt, why if you dragged us out in the middle of the bush, there's nothing above us, there's nothing behind us. Amongst the rock. Is some ruins, some bricks, and concrete and that. But there's something underneath us, which just makes it very quite interesting. So I'm out here, it's nice and sunny. I've got my hat on backwards. Dairy. Marindindi, Marindindi. Remnants. Deminence here. Wow. This rock has like fine little pieces of sand in it. Dairy. Marindindi. Dairy. Tile there. Part of a floor, maybe for a bathroom. Dairy. Marindindi.
Derry. It's probably one of the first bridges that was actually placed in this area. I'm actually in Murrindindi, which is sort of between um, Glenburn and uh, Yay. So, Derry. Right, we just almost got by a snake. You can just see the end of its tail. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna not even go in there. My foot was right there and the snake was right there. And it was a brown snake, isn't it? Yeah. And they can get you if they bite you. Oh my God. That was scary. There was a hole there, but we're going to go to the other hole now. That was way too close. As possible. I'm not that nimble. But it's all like, it's all just big gate. Little hut. Looks so measly over there. Over there's the drain where Panda Explorers refused to talk to me. And as you can see, there's like a little drain here. Very old and probably original to the place. Yeah, you can see the drain is sort of made out of rocks and concrete and stuff. And the rock is definitely local because it's pumice. Maybe it's called Scoria. Oh, it's got that oily smell. Wow, it's like little thingy bobs. I'm not gonna try to start it. Yeah, that's cool. Ooh. It's just like lots of stuff here. Whoa. Just empty. Thing on my bobs. It's like where the actual crane operator would have sat. Sort of kind of hard to document, but yeah. That's where they would have sat because it would have been a chair. Ready? I don't know what that means, but it looks important. Marindindi. Um, drain pipes come down here and they go into this concrete little culvert. I don't know what to call it, but yeah, it goes over there. For some unknown reason, this window isn't smashed. Yeah, this building's in quite good condition compared to the other ones. I don't know how this one survived. This building so intact, the loading dock still has the little handrails, which all the other buildings did not have. Yeah. There would have been a sign there. This building probably would have been painted green at some stage. Texture. Grabber. Door to room number one. If you look carefully, there's no safety line for this room, so it could have just been a storage room. Okay, let's go inside. Just an empty room. This is cool though. Navy New South Wales 2. There's a picture of a bird there. It's got another roof vent with a pulley system, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this room. Yeah. Alright, coming into this room, um, what do we got? We got some mad pieces, sort of a pan tilt of this room. It's kind of a weird L shape, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know, random audio. Uh, The pulley system has been turned into a bird's nest. There's a rope here which would have been used for the pulley system. As you can see, the handle still remains. It's made out of like a, a weighty rubber. Up in those pulleys, another handle also is present. Hook, nook. This building is so intact. Arndindi, Arndindi. Coming out. Room number three contains a lovely Look at that piece! I don't know, that's pretty much it. Just like, yeah, just sort of an empty room. Just blank walls. The floor was originally painted black at one point. On the floor, there's this little card thing. Does anyone have any clue what that is for? There is a crispy old fire hydrant here. And next to the old munitions hut, there is another one over there. Lovely big paddock of where munitions used to, really? There's a snake? It's only a little one, but. So there's like a snake hiding in there. We're not gonna go any closer. We are now entering the main administration and receiving and dispatch area of the munitions depot. 
This cluster of tattered buildings once formed the hub of the entire site, with all the tramways leading to the main loading shed located in the middle of the complex. I've got goosebumps. This building was used to house and charge up the battery electric locomotives that were used on the site's tramway. This structure also housed a workshop to perform maintenance tasks on the locomotives and rolling stock. Oh wow, what's this? A little tool holding up nook, same colour style as the one in the pump house. Okay, this used to be a workshop. This is seriously sick. Crispy old workbench. A little corner of the room once contained another crusty workbench. Here comes the Melbourne based filmmaking sensation. Hey, why did you just break into this place? A little bit of a tilt of the train track here. So interesting. There's like a little sort of gantry crane slash like hoisting, I don't really know what to call it, but it would have once like scooped stuff out of the little trains that came in here. Uh, the reason this building is a skeleton is because it was once made of solid hardy flex. The floor was once painted green. Remnants. I love the little steel protectors on those flue rows. By the looks of the damage over here, it looks like there was a little fire in this building at one stage. <laughs> The rail track Panorex Wars is standing on once would have stored an engine, but if the engine needed a service, it would have come all the way to here into the workshop to get repaired. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were already seen it. In Skelly. Panda Explorers was saying the amount of oil on the ground here, this room could have been an engine shed. Judging by the amount of grease there, we're guessing that this was once an engine shed. The little trains would have once rolled through that roller door over there. As you can see, there's not enough room for a car to come in, only three trains. You can see the train tracks end over here, so they must have ripped up the tracks before they abandoned this place. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, they've been concreted over. They obviously just left the tracks in the shed because like it's just a shed, who cares? But they got rid of the tracks outside. So this just became a doorway with a ramp. In Skelly. Little switchboard over here. Building 14 switchboard. Empty. Empty. In Skelly. The fluorescent light bulbs are still intact, but there is no roof. Old fire extinguisher holding nook. In Skelly. Check out this little dunny over here. Epic dunny. Talk about a public toilet. Definitely one of my most favorite skelly buildings ever. Possible cubicle door. Okay, coming into these toilets, they're absolutely sick. Oh my Crispy. The door is epically crispy. That is an old school door handle. The doorway texture still remains. I love how the toilet bowl is intact. But none of the rest of the building is. <laughs> Toilet! Yeah, I don't know, pretty cool room. Vintage vacant dingle. I love these little feet. Oh wow, this window would have been able to just be propped open at one stage. Now, outdoor urinal remnants. That's so cool. This urinal isn't made of stainless steel, it's made out of some type of rock. Pretty cool. This room was once painted green as well. Classic toilet emergency leakage drain. Toilet review. I think I have to rate this one a zero, but it is awesome on an urbex perspective. Um, I don't know, just sort of like a toilet. Um, pretty cool though. All right, let's head out. That toilet is just so beast. All right, let's move on to the rest of the complex. The concrete foundation in this destroyed shed also has train tracks on it too, so maybe this was a wagon shed. The whole shed has collapsed, but you can see it's quite long. This building is just flopped and collapsing on itself.
These are the vents that would have once sat on the top of the roof. There are still some steel pipes remaining. All right, a little look at this uh, car, carriage shed sort of thing. I'm guessing that's what it is. Um, hmm. Got some type of like warning pieces of wood there and over there. Interesting, little window ruins. Interesting. I want to see if we can see the rail track from this angle. Hard to see the train tracks from this angle. It's so hard to document, but there's um, some really cool old roller doors that would have, um, you know, opened the shed up so the trains could have come out. So just imagine that sort of door on a rail and multiple of those at the front of the shed. I don't know. Hard to document, but it's cool. Look at these lovely roller wheels. These buildings all would have been clad in asbestos containing fibrous cement sheet. That's why they're now skellies. Rail sheds over there. Other stuff over there, loading dock sort of thing there. Coming out of this loading dock, there's even more sort of tramway tracks that's so sick and they just go all the way into that bush. That is definitely one of Victoria's most dangerous level crossings. Little red in shed, let's go check it out. Building number 15. This building was called Transfer Shelter. The tramway ran into the shelter, as did the concrete road. Cargo could be transferred from trams to road vehicles or vice versa using the overhead gantry crane in the shed. A little terracotta pot. Maybe a remnant blast or some type of old gantry crane here. The road continues over here, but I don't know where it went. Yeah, I don't know what this was. Just some type of like loading area or maybe a maintenance little dongle thing. I love these little warning thing in my boobs. Or pile of like mulch. There's a pallet there that used to contain carpet tiles. Carpet tiles, remnant concrete pipes. This building is what was known as loading shed. It was used to unload explosives off regular road trucks and transfer them onto the site's narrow gauge trams. From the shed, the trams would go and unload the explosives into the site's numerous munitions magazines for storage. When orders of explosives were needed by the military, the trams would fetch the explosives from the magazines and bring them back to the shed where they would be loaded back onto road trucks and brought to their respective explosive destinations. Battery electric trams were originally used to transport the explosives around the site to minimize ignition risk, but due to unreliability, in 1958, regular rubber-tired road vehicles were used to transport the explosives around the site. Dairy. Check this out, a really cool old sign here. Let me just give you guys a little bit of a walk past first. Just get, uh, get the vibes off that one. It's so cool this is still here. Safety time, all the time. Our objective each month, free from injury. Panda Explosives saying that could have been the Navy emblem there. Stores and transport branch derriment. It looks like it might have been the Navy. They must have had little numbers they could stick in that said their previous best month without injury, like how many hours they lost or hour, um, days they lost without injury, like days since our last injury. What's I'm not these too one? sure these ones say. That must have been this month with hours lost through injury and this month lost, um, days lost. This was once the dispatch loading dock, which makes it very quite interesting. All right, I'm gonna just jump up. All right, coming inside. This is so cool. This is just bananas. Some type of lines on the floor here. That says clean area. So over there is the clean area. I'm guessing I'm standing in the dirty area. It seems a bit over the top, but it was incredibly important to keep the main transfer area clean and free of contaminants to ensure the quality of the explosives. And most importantly, to make sure the shed was free of explosive residue or anything that could cause a spark. The clean areas where explosives were handled were kept spotless to reduce ignition risks. So the trams would have been filled with munitions in here and then they would have gone out the door over there. So here is where the carriages would have been and then this floor was built later but there used to be a hole there which led to that little shed and that's where the engines would have parked in that shed while all of this would be getting filled with explosives. You can see that the ballast still remains. Looks like they had a little party in here maybe. Floyd's going walk about. Floyd's in this hole. What's under there? Uh, not much. Okay. Getting the heebie-jeebies in here. Switchboard. Boring switchboard. I've got goosebumps.
dirty area and then here's the clean area on this side as well too. Yeah, I think they've had a little party in here at some stage. Beer bottles and stuff. Water? Little broom remnants for keeping the clean area clean. I noticed this whole place is using wood as a pretty big material. That's probably because during the Second World War when this was built, uh, metal couldn't really be used too much because they needed to use it for building tanks and like that so that's why a lot of this place is made of wood when they were constructing this place i'm pretty sure this is why it's there there's little numbers up there so they knew which section of wood to put where all right i'm going to go over here pallets here no clue why probably for the party receiving loading dock saber breathing apparatus little steps receiving loading dock this loading dock here is also a clean area too light switches this is dairy, 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 dairy. All right, let's continue the explore. How's it going, team? <coughs> oh, getting, getting sick. What's with this floor? Yeah, just like a little tack on floor. Look in the little thing. A little hot thing, little serving thing here. Solo. Texture. I don't think that's anything relevant. Vintage door. It's on the roof there, coming down. This room is so cool. View area. And the linoleum floor. Look how that is. What's this? I think it might have just been for the party that they had in here. Random hole. Grabbing a mad snap of dem windows. All right, coming out. Possible kitchenette remnant here. All right, so down here, I think there could have been a little drink tap at one time. Just due to that. Little tea towel holder. Next to Panda Explorers' feet. Some type of thing. Don't know if that's A-band related or not. A much more intact rendition of the broom holding device here on this side. I think I'm in the clean area. I don't know. I have no clue anymore. How cool is that? Nice word. That's a good name, Dash. Sweet. I noticed this road is made of concrete. That's pretty cool. It's not asphalt. It is concrete. Oh, there's a drain. Little shed here. We're going to go see if we can get in. Okay, let's go on. Oh, You're check right, this out. You were right. Oh, what? They, the tracks did go through to the other side. Oh my gosh. So this wall was never here. The train track definitely would have come through both ends of that building we just checked out. The rail would have just continued into that building, but they've built a wall there since. So we're guessing that this would have been a locomotive shed. Well, sort of. The locomotives would have sat in here so they didn't get wet while they were getting loaded. You can see the tracks still yeah. remain in this part of the building. There must have been a roller door at one stage. Ancient piece. Possible school desk remnant. That is a really interesting brick. All right, come out. Oh, there's a huge bush. Oh. All right, out of that little shed. The shed where the engines just chilled out in while they're getting loaded was building number 11. High impact piece. Officially demonetized. Wooden ventilation awnings. There would have been an opening and the engines would have lived in there while they were getting, um, you know, loaded. Dairy. Dairy. All right, I'm pretty sure this building here is the main admin block. This was apparently the guard room slash control room for the base. Let's see if we can get in. Wild guess, I think we can. Insulators up there. All right, into this building. Building number nine. All right, well, let's go in. Oh, wow, what's this? Little fuse box thing with a little window. Extinguisher three. All right, let's go in. Lovely window here. There's a way of opening those, but this one's broken. Okay, first, let's go in here. Whoa! Oh, whoa! Muscle throw up there. Little room here. Pretty awesome. Would have been a storage room for, like, tools and stuff like that. Like pickaxes, that sort of cape. I love when they do little outlines, because when you urbex the building after it's abandoned, you know exactly what the rooms were for. Little numbers and stuff. The numbers down there correspond with the amount of tools that used to sit on the rack. So once upon a time, there would have been five forks here. It's got the half door because people would have just come up here and said, I need a pickaxe. And they would have dispensed a pickaxe.
The hardwood floor is still quite hard. Light fixture. Some type of special little sliding thing in here. I don't really know what that's for. Just like a special shutter. Maybe this used to be an added layer of protection so people couldn't just come here and like break in and like steal all the tools. Maybe, I don't know. Coming out into this room. Little room here. Um, pretty empty at this stage, but there's still a few little remnants, so let's have a look. We've got heaps of nangs in here. Nangs! Nangs! Nang! Nang! Other than that, there's some, there's some other remnants. Let's have a look. Just numbers on the wall. Yeah. See that? Getting up good. Remnants. 67. Well, I wonder if these blinds still work. Moment of truth. How f***ing tall were people back in the f***ing 1940s? Oh! Yeah, oh! They still work. All right, heading out into this area. Little toilet room here. Let's have a look. Sink remnants, light bulb ruins. I do apologize, this was a shower remnant which uh, is pretty cool and there's like a little bench here to just get changed and stuff, that's sick. I'm surprised this shower has a door because I thought you had to toughen up in the army and let everyone see your Single user toilet cubicle. Here. What's this? Just like a little hat. Um, it's pretty dark and it's pretty dingy. It's just a toilet room, man. I really don't care. All right, in here, little room. There's Floyd rocking out on his phone. The original lock and then the most recent lock. Taking shots of this room. I've taken shots here. Cool. An island demonant. Remnants. Symbols fire class six. Hair brooms. So this room here, it could have been a barber shop or it could have been like a little change room where people would have came in and got changed. No real telling. Sort of, there's remnants, but uh, no definitive answer. It might have just been a general store room. I do not know. Are you flapping? I'm not flapping yet. Oh. Not a flapper like these blinds, but they're not flapping. I love how the electrical sockets have the, like the little protector thingies around it. I just love how they're the old style switches. The vehicles going in would have gone that way, and any vehicle coming out would have come out of there. Who would have thought? There would have been a gate at one stage. Tap nook. Here, little tap remnant. Um, Bambi! All right, on to the next admin building. Unfortunately, this historic building was demolished during the widening project of Palmer's Road back in 2020. Backside view of the office block. Building number eight, office. I wonder what we're gonna find here. Crispy little awnings. I love that little cement awning over the door. Let's hop in. Oh, this place is nuts. What the That is something. Really cool room. Yeah. So, yeah. You can see this room would have once been painted a beige, lovely vintage fluoro light fixture. Alright, coming down the hallway. Panda Explorers just said, look at that texture. Okay, let's go in. That's vintage. Male's toilets. In here, past the bird's nest, lies a lovely ceramic urinal. That is so vintage. Water resistant, sort of like paint, in case there's a bit of spray. Remnants of a cistern. Classic 1940s glass. Do the Louvet still work? Oh, uh, uh, nope. One of the door handles. Tilt of this cubicle. Such a vintage toilet cubicle. This Danny's really important to me. Made by Paramount Plastics. How incredible is that? Plaster ceiling thing. Oh no, wow, that's a pretty recent life fixture. Okay, what's in here? Oh, this is vintage. Ancient toilet thing. Uh, it's busted. Oh my Look at the amount of dandelions in here. All right, coming out into make the shower. How incredible is that? Shower situation going on here. Pretty cool. This would have been a barracks also, I guess. Wow. Yep. 
No doors, classic army style. Everything's been ripped out. Sink would have been there. Little books to hang his stuff. The windows were never no perv windows, so anyone could have seen you having a shower. There is blinds. I guess that's pretty much it. Let's jump out of the shower. Out of the toilet. Continue the explore. Let's just walk down the hallway for a bit and mm, enjoy that spookiness right there. All right, what's in here? Just an empty office, really. We've got a pan from the other side. Yep, that's literally the whole room. So, yeah, because we're in the admin block. Coming out into the next office. All right, attempting, attempted, I mean, pan tilt thingy of this room. Let's get going. All right, another office here. Okay, I really don't care. It's just another office. Some type of phallic, okay. Okay, office here. Uh, it's got a segmented door. This would have been a supply shop thingy, my Bob. It might have been, but it was more likely an admin office. The segmented door would have formed the front reception desk. PowerPoint, a little shelf possibly. Yeah, let's continue the explore into this office. Whoa, this one's really cool. Check out the segmented door, that's sick. Um, this is cool too. Little remnant up here, super cool electronic remnant. It's hard to read, I don't know. It's cool though. Some other type of communications room into. Um, yeah, just sort of an empty storage room, little area, I would say. I don't know, sort of hard to document. Let's just continue. I think you get the point, they're just empty offices. All right, into yet another office. Well, just another empty, boring office. With pieces, pieces, and light fixtures, and vintage ceiling beds. Okay, that's enough of this room. Coming out. Okay, what's at the end? At the end of the hallway, just another sort of empty, boring office. Who would have thought? Maybe a desk would have gone in this corner. Look at that piece, man! Alright, okay, I've had enough of this stupid office building. Alright, let's uh, let's get out of this office building, it's kind of annoying me now. Wow, that roof has just collapsed. Love that old door, that is so cool. Light fixture! Okay, let's go. Admin doors here. They had screen doors to keep the pesky flies out. This is cool. It would have been fire extinguishers here. Is that the same? That's the same over there. Love that vintage awning. Guards tower here. Admin and sort of, yeah, sort of stuff. Over here there's some like weird bunker room. I have no clue what it does. This was the base's air raid shelter. I'm slightly perplexed as to why it wasn't built underground, but it is what it is. This building was also demolished in the Palmer's Road widening project. A lovely garden tool organizer. With a gasket. Oh, it smells like a sauna too. Yeah, sort of a hard room maybe to protect against bomb attacks. You can see this place would have been built by just slowly layering and layering concrete in a, in a mold. This would have taken ages to build. Look at the roof. Look how thick this concrete is. They definitely didn't want to get blown up. Look how thick the concrete wall is compared to the flimsy wooden door that it has. There originally would have been some type of blast door, but I believe this building was last used as a garden maintenance shed. So that explains the flimsy wooden door. Whoa, there's a mouse living in here. Little tool area there, it's pretty cool. Gasket, Stilson, nothing much. Little piece there, some type of remnant there. Just down a little hole. Look at that. All right, coming out now. Let's come out. Oh, it smells like a sauna too. A little gravel storage area. Anyway, little pan of the thingy bobs here. Some cement truck with way too much cement. Just came and plonked all their cement here. It still looks watery, but trust me, it's rock solid. There's a fish plate here, possibly for the tramway that was here, but it looks a bit too broad of a gauge. Pan of the whole facility from the little gravel holders. I guess that's what you call them. Pretty awesome. Former lighting post there. I've been seen by about a thousand trillion different cars and no one's cared at all. No clue what that thing was for. That is the remains of a flagpole. Here's the pretty much iconic guard stand. So awesome. Building number 21. This building was demolished in the Palmer's Road widening project. It's cool, this building's roof is made out of tiles, which I think is really awesome because every other building here, the roof is made out of asbestos sheeting or corrugated iron, so that's cool to see. Lovely texture. Wow. 
is so cool. I'm guessing that's where little boom gates would have rested. I love those little pylon things. Little bollards. That's keeping everybody out. All right, let's go inside. This is cool. Wow. Dairy. All right, so we're inside. Let's have a look around. You come in the doors, there's two podiums. There's one here, someone would have looked out there and someone would have sat and looked out to the road, which back then would have all been paddocks. Dairy. Just a lot of garbage and stuff. Not much of the original building remains. PowerPoint, crispy, small cans there. We see this is how people are getting in, there's footprints. Yeah, super busy road there, but I'm in a high vis, I can get away with it. Little piece of asbestos for some reason. Makeshift handle. Very interesting old outlet there. Ancient phone books. Metal remnant. Safe to say these blinds no longer. Dairy, dairy, dairy. Some type of alarm system, or it could have been an old school telephone. Dairy. I love these little doors with the small windows, they're so cool. Dairy. Coming out. 360 photo montage of this hut. G'day everyone, Matt from Panda Explores here. G'day everyone, Matt from Panda Explores here. G'day, welcome to Panda Explores. G'day everyone, Matt from Panda Explores here. And of course you know Panda, 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 Panda. And of course you know Dairy. Anyway, let's continue. We've checked out the office, checked out that. Finally, we're ready to move on to another building. Office block pan, another little sort of admin building and a large shed and such. All right, let's go check out the shed. Or as it is affectionately named on the map, store. Lots of tires here, little steps. This place is literally just an empty shed filled with random junk. I don't really care too much. That's why I'm just showing you these few shots and that's gonna be pretty much it. More big sliding doors. Poison behind the doors. Boring junk, boring cupboards, boring cupboards. Remnants here, also some remnants of when the workers were doing little additions and equations just figuring stuff out on the job. It's really cool. Wow, cool old door. Handle in the middle. Wow, look at... This is actually really impressive. Look at the, uh... Some type of stuff with the star material on it. Boring stuff. Alright, heading out. Little shed tacked on the back here. Let's have a look. This was apparently the Outworks store. Whatever that means. Looks pretty crispy. Looks pretty boring too. I'm not even gonna bother going in guys. Just an empty storage shed. Nothing really much to see. Some type of little gravel storage nook thing here. Goodness gracious me! Look at that beast man! All right, little shed here. There was once three sheds in a row here. One was the fire tender igloo. So basically where they would store a fire truck. One was a fire equipment store and one was a fire plant building. I'm not too sure which building this was, but it is incredibly crispy. Zigzag rafter beams, Panda Explores. There's just like destroyed pallets of clay or talcum powder. It's really weird. Other than that, the shed's pretty much empty, but there's a whole bunch of talcum powdery stuff over there. Yeah, if you guys know what the heck this stuff is, please give us a call in the comments. Little concrete things. Postmaster General's communication pit. Drain. Building number 34. Azzy. Alright, in building number 34, what do we got? The doors have been ripped off their hinges. Absolutely nothing, probably an equipment storage area. This was the trailer pump house. A vehicle trailer with a water container and a pump on it 
that was used to fight fires was once stored in this mysterious shed. Building number 34. Dairy. Let's get a look at building number 36. Dairy. For legal reasons, I must inform you that on the map, this shed is referred to as trailer hose carrier. I'm so sorry. Just a little storage area, really. It's like some trays here. Maybe it was like a culinary storage zone. Just like a plate and random junk, really. Don't bonk your head when coming out of building number 36. Dairy. So here's the like base here. There's also other military fencing on that side of the road. I have no clue what that was used for in that area. Although small in area, that compound on that side of the road once served a variety of uses. Mess facilities, sleeping quarters, lavatories, petrol and oil stores, a copper compound, and an explosive testing ground were just some of the structures present on that side of the road. Now, there is nothing but a rusted fence.